Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable, but to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming. Every day, various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way, soon the followers, you will make it through, the fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah by your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fitra is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on your side is a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, the next class here at Sunnah Followers online. And I want to remind everybody this is Saturday, and we have so many classes scheduled uh, uh, at 7 30 Eastern Standard Time which is right after this class. We have another class scheduled. And I want to remind you guys, it's the Fika class with Brother Hanif. Brother Hanif, who's a graduate of the University of Medina, you know, he will be lecturing today. Uh, he will review Hadith. He will also review some Fika with you and also answer, you know, speak about marriage, marriage in Islam. So you don't want to miss his class. I've gotten so many nice, um, comments from you guys. Uh, and I meant to share that too uh, with the brother too, how uh, so many of you have sent comments about how you enjoy his class. Because again, the English, it's not that, you know, often that you can find people who really understand the religion and speak, you know, good English. That's the problem because uh, I see most of the comments that I'm getting from uh, the people here who are uh, following us here on Sooner Followers is that, oh, thank you for using English. Thank you for now it all makes sense. You know, so often we get lost in the Arabic language. We use Arabic terms that we don't understand the meaning of. And then we forget our own language too. So Alhamdulillah, um, Brother Hanif's class is tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after this class. And also, again, let me share with everyone here, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Dermali, who's our resident scholar here at Sunnah Followers. Uh, uh, he will be doing his dream interpretation. So if you have a dream, if you have a dream that you need to have interpreted, please join the Zoom room. So that way uh, uh, you can um, uh, give more details so that Dr. Jermali can be, uh, try to get as accurate as he can, you know, uh, in, in inter interpreting your dream. So I want to remind everybody that let me put that here too, because so many people are looking forward to that. Uh, a lot of Muslims I got had said they got dreams. Um, let me put that on here too. I meant to add it at the last class at the, for nine o'clock because. Um, okay, let me do this. I'll put it here so that way the sisters keep asking dream interpretation at 9 p.m. Eastern. So there, I'll put it in the little ticker so that way you guys are inshallah see it. Let's see if it shows up. But there, it'll be in the ticker. So at 9 p.m. tonight, uh, if you have any dreams that you would like to have interpreted, join here 
Uh, come into the Zoom room so Dr. Jamali can get more details from you. That's at nine. And also tonight we have my class at 10. Oh yeah. Y'all think y'all is going to get away with belief in the articles of faith? We're going to be speaking about the books of Allah. We're going to continue our discussion on the books of Allah, inshallah, you know, uh, tonight at 10. So that's what we're looking forward to uh, for the rest of the schedules tonight. And yes, tomorrow, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will have the Aris Institute Intensive Care uh, intensive care, intensive learning program with Dr. Jermali. He'll be teaching Akita, going in detail about Akita and also Sira. So that's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want all the children of Sunnah followers to be there for that as well. Okay, so that's what we have lined up for the rest of tonight and tomorrow morning. And with that said, let's get started. Tonight for this class, this is the class on the book written by Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid. The book written by Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid entitled Diluting Wella Well Better. We will be covering pages 98 through 100. Pages 98 through 100. And we've been speaking about how the fitra, just like the introduction song says, the fitra is within us. It's never been gone. It, that's why you're not a revert. You, the fitra never left you. It's always been there. Whether or not it was awakened, that's the question. Whether or not it was awakened and you helped nourish it, that's the question. We've talked about the things we can do to nourish the fitra and to awaken it. Usually with most of us, it takes a bad experience, maybe a car accident, the death of a loved one, losing a job, a divorce, something bad usually happens, something traumatic happens in our personal life, that usually awakens the fitra if the fitra has been uh, uh, burned out. Or maybe your fitra was, was always awake, but it was low. It wasn't as, as high as it should be. And the fitra is what fuels your faith. So if your faith is weak, if you're one of those Muslims that's celebrating holidays, if you're one of those Muslims that's celebrating birthdays, if you're one of those Muslims that's uh, showing allegiance to anything, anything that, uh, that opposes what Allah says, if you're one of those Muslims that has allegiance to anything that goes against our Islamic values, then that means your faith is weak. You're not the strong Muslim you think you are. Your faith is weak. That means your fitra is there. But it's dim, it's dimmed. It's not as, 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 as strong as it could be. So we've talked about things we can do to strengthen it, to help it to grow, to feed it like you feed a fire. You feed a fire to make it stronger. Well, what can I do to feed my fitra? Well, number one, remembrance of Allah. Because that's what it's all about. That fitra, your fitra is trying to find its way back to a law. So we have to give it what it needs. And that is remembrance of a law. That's why we make our prayers. Because that keeps the fitra burning. Okay. You fast during Ramadan. That keeps it lit. Okay. You are constantly, I mean, not constantly, consistently, consistently seek knowledge of this deen, knowledge of this religion, because by seeking knowledge of this religion, that reinforces what your purpose is. It helps to remind your soul as to what it's supposed to be doing, why it was created in the first place. 
And the knowledge that you gain should be knowledge that is of benefit. If the knowledge is not of benefit, it's not going to help you on, in your journey. So we've been speaking about that. And we've talked yesterday about things that can stand in the way of your fitra finding its way back to Allah. In other words, things that can stand in the way of your faith growing, things that can stand in the way of your journey to paradise. And we talked yesterday about the number one thing that can stay that will stand in the way of your journey is ignorance. Ignorance of the religion not learning about this religion, okay? Not learning about a law. Seeking knowledge that is not of benefit. We talked about how ignorance leads to other uh, such um, bad emotions of the heart. The heart has barriers. The barriers of the heart are known as our emotions. Some emotions are good, like happiness. Some emotions are bad, like sadness. And some emotions are detrimental to us, such as depression. So the, the emotional state of the human being, this is what stands in the way of your journey towards the law. You have to balance out those emotions. You have to do like the prophet said, know yourself. Know what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you depressed. Know what to do when you feel those emotions coming on. And that's what we're going to be focusing on for the next week. So yesterday we spoke about that. We talked about how loneliness and, and sadness and depression are all barriers. Okay, that really result from ignorance. Well, today we're going to speak about another barrier. We're going to talk about the subconscious. Your thoughts. Who'd have thought it? Who'd have thunk it, as they say? Your thoughts. Thoughts, your subconscious stand in the way of your journey as well. So let me take everything down uh, from the screen here. Uh, yeah, okay, hold on. And uh, well, what I got up. Okay, hold on. Oh, I don't have that up. I don't even know what I got going on here. Hold on for a second. Let me take this down and take this down. And let me start off with uh, the Zoom room. And I'm about to make the Zoom full screen. Right. There we go. And I'm going to share you guys to my PowerPoint first. People on here, we're going to go to the frozen screen. Take you all to my beautiful, calming background. Like I said, get to know yourself. Since I'm the one doing all this streaming of all these classes and my anxiety is so high. I know that if I don't uh, curb it, I can freak out. So I made sure I got backgrounds, calming uh, 3D backgrounds that I made. I made these myself, thanks to your donations, uh, uh, you know, to help keep me calm as I'm sitting on this internet streaming all day, fireplaces, water, beautiful, tranquil, dark, because y'all know I'm a dark person. Paranormal, that's Layla, I'm dark. Werewolves, shifters. So a nice calming dark background, <laughs> you know, to keep me from freaking out. But anyway, everybody should be able to see this. Um, and let me go to the large screen, make it bigger. Okay, so this is what we're going to speak about today. We're going to speak about the role that your subconscious plays because subcon your subconscious is a barrier of the heart too. Like just like with dreams, you know, bad dreams, like the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, bad dreams can come from one of three sources. They can either come from shaitan 
They can come from yourself or they can come from your subconscious. Okay, they can come from your subconscious. So the subconscious plays a big role in our journey towards the law. And also we're gonna speak about arrogance. So let's take a look at what, what uh, these pages, this is page 98. So everybody turn to page 98 in your book and take screenshots. Okay, let's talk about the subconscious. In Islam, the subconscious is known as nafs. When you see that Arabic word nafs, nafs is referring to your subconscious. And our subconscious has a great effect on our actions, our thoughts, and our attitudes, our emotions. The subconscious exists within us. And the subconscious includes not just our thoughts, not just our attitude, but also our desires and our inclinations, the emotions. And when your fitra is, it, uh, becomes contaminated or when your fitra begins to weaken, it will create a, ba a barrier, just like uh, if a person has heart problems, you know, uh, a heart blockage. A heart blockage will obstruct the healing process. Well, the same thing with the subconscious. The subconscious acquires power over the soul. That's what makes it dangerous. Because whatever, um, whatever you are experiencing subconsciously, it ends up taking control over your soul. And this is where we begin that struggle, the battle of the nafs, as it's called. We're fighting between the heart and the soul, the struggle between the heart and the, snow, the, the soul, because your subconscious, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts have now uh, created an obstruction around your heart. And your soul is trying to pull you over to the dark side. Think about uh, uh, Dark Vader, the dark side, okay? So the dominating effect of negativity uh, within the subconsciousness is one of the most prevalent hurdles in our journey towards the law. If a person's subconscious is weak, that person will have characteristics such as arrogance, vanity, pride, heedlessness. Heedless mean, means you don't care. You do things without thinking. You have no concern, no care for anything. It's all about what you want, what you feel. You don't think about the consequences. All of that ends up happening if your subconscious takes over your heart. Y'all understand that? So that's why the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in so many different hadiths that we have to be careful of the bad thoughts that we get. That's why he taught us what to do. If you're having bad thoughts, say a'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. If you're having bad desires, say a'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Whenever something bad happens to you it, uh, subconsciously, seek refuge in a law from it. And also after that, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us to also do a lot of self-reflection because self-reflection brings about purification as Dr. Asim was speaking about today in his class. As Muslims, we have to purify our soul, purify our mind. In other words, purify our subconscious so that we can remain balanced in humility, dignity, awareness of Allah and all those other good characteristics. Humility, dignity, thankfulness, truthfulness, 
these are good emotions as opposed to loneliness, sadness, depression, and all of that. Okay. We talked about how important repentance is. A person can never succeed in their journey towards the law if they don't own their mistakes, own their sins, and then repent. Well, if a person's subconscious takes over, you're not going to think about repenting. Because again, you're going to think, what is there to repent from? I'm just giving in to my desires. I'm giving in to my inclinations. I'm giving in to my thoughts. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't think it's bad. A lot of you people don't take uh, the religion serious. You play around on the internet. You come in and harass people. Make fun of Muslims who are trying to learn the deen the correct way. You don't see anything wrong with it. But Allah sees a lot wrong with it. So repentance is very important, guys. You know, in order to overcome the subconscious, you have to do a lot of self-reflection, own your mistakes, and repent. And be sincere in your repentance. And then work on developing self-discipline. Learning how to discipline yourself to not fall victim to the subconscious. And the only way you can do that is by remembering a law. That's why we tell you don't abandon your prayers. Don't abandon your fast. Don't stop reading the Quran. Don't stop learning the religion. Be consistent in your Islamic classes because these things will help to keep you balanced and help you to keep control over your subconscious, which in turn ends up controlling the soul. Does everybody understand that? So we're always caught up in this inner battle and this inner fight to overcome bad tendencies to overcome not knowing when to shut up, for example. A lot of us like to talk. A lot of us like to create trouble. We don't know when to shut up. We don't know when to hold and we don't know when to fold. We end up hurting people. We end up saying things that are totally inappropriate. We end up showing our ignorance. We end up making people hate us. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not argue. Do not argue. Do not argue or debate with the people of knowledge because all you're going to do is make them hate you. And do not argue. Do not argue. Do not argue or debate with an ignorant person because all you're going to do is make them hurt you. Do y'all see how these hadiths make sense? Because if you're dealing with a person who has not overcome their subconscious, you're dealing with a person that has bad tendencies. You're dealing with a person that can end up hurting you. And on the other hand, if you're dealing with a person who has maintained that balance, that person is going to eventually start to hate you because they're so intelligent, they'll see through you and they'll see you to be the worm that you are. So y'all see how all these hadiths really come back and, and they play a great role in our uh, survival as Muslims. So the subconscious is something that we have to be aware of. We have to go through the process of making sure that our thoughts are not bad by seeking refuge in Allah. Seek refuge in Allah from bad thoughts because bad thoughts can travel to the heart. And when whatever affects the heart will end up affecting your actions. For example, arrogance. What does it mean to be arrogance? Arrogance means to think that you are so important 
that you're more important over everyone else, that you're better than everyone else, that you are above correction, you are above mistakes. In other words, an arrogant person is a person that puts himself on a level equal to or more than a law, better than a law. And this is a form of shirk. This is a sin of disbelief. That's why arrogance is a sin of disbelief. It's a sin of shirk. That's what shirk means. Shirk means disbelief. Okay? When arrogance takes hold of, of the heart, it creates a barrier between you and a law. And it leads to an attitude of self-reliance. Uh, and it leads to a lack of humility before a law. And the barrier of arrogance comes from a lack of knowledge. People who are arrogant are people who are ignorant of a law. These are people that don't understand that Allah is the Lord of all mankind and jinn. He's the creator of all things. When a person fails to acknowledge Allah for what he is, then this is the person that mistakenly believes that anything good that happens to them comes from them instead of from a law. And this is what leads to a sense of self-sufficiency, a, a, a self-admiration and arrogance. So we have to really, really, really be very careful of this barrier of the heart known as arrogance. And it comes from your subconscious, from thinking that you are all that and a bag of chips. It begins with a thought. It begins with the thought of you thinking that you are so important. And now it then travel to your heart, to thinking that you better than everyone else, and it's showing through your actions and all of that. And that's what happened. Allah tells us the story of Karun. He tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, Karun said, this has been given to me because of the knowledge I have. And Allah mentions Karun's story in the Quran as a cautionary example to us of what happens as a result of the subconscious so Karun, he attributed everything to himself. And as a result, since he attributed all of his success to himself instead of Allah, that's when Allah tells us in the interpretation, the meaning, we cause the earth to swallow him and his dwelling place. And he had no group to help him against Allah, nor was he one who could save himself. So that's the dangers of arrogance. And this is the beauty of the Quran, guys. Allah, one third of the Quran, Allah uh, shares with us as a reminder, the history. The history is uh, our lessons for us to learn from what happened to the men and women who came before us. And Karun is one of the most hated people who will be of the people of hell because you know of his arrogance and then our prophet tells us a wonderful hadith he says there was a man who had a was walking around in a beautiful garment he had his hair slicked down and he was so impressed with himself so allah caused the earth to swallow him and he will keep on being swallowed until the day of judgment so that's another hadith that illustrates the importance of staying away from arrogance and instead of attributing the goodness that Allah has given you to yourself to attribute it to Allah. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this is the lesson for today. I made it short because uh, we do have another class. The class with brother uh, Hanif uh, will inshallah be in a few minutes, but I want everyone here to remember you know, another barrier that will stand in the way of you and your journey towards the law is arrogance and failure to control your subconscious thoughts. When you start having those bad thoughts like doubting, 
questioning things, thoughts to commit sin, thoughts to say things that you know you shouldn't say, thoughts to do things that you know you should not do. Think about Karun, okay? Think about how this is one of the barriers that will stand between you and your journey towards the law and then seek refuge. Our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us to seek refuge in Allah when you find yourself in these situations. Ask Allah to forgive you of your sins and ask Allah to give you the power to balance out that subconscious. Ask Allah to give you the ability to disregard the evil thoughts or the evil notions that you may be experiencing. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here. Supana kalahuma wa bihamdika a shadon laila haila enta a stock the rukawa tubi lake. Are there any questions or comments about this? Does everybody understand how the subconscious affects the soul? It all starts with a thought. If you don't say audu balahi against those thoughts, it's gonna go down to your heart. Once it hits the heart, that's it. If you don't purify it, get it out of there, it's gonna travel through your actions. That's and this is the uh also the beauty of Allah and his uh kindness towards us. Allah doesn't hold us accountable for our bad thoughts, he only holds us accountable if we act upon them. So that's why when you get those thoughts to do bad, say Audu Balahi, because that'll take it away. But if you don't, it's gonna go to your heart and then your subconscious is gonna take over and you're gonna find it hard to resist taking action, adding an action to that thought. So that's why it's important to seek refuge. 